MBH Online Accounting and Business Solutions, helping your business to soar. Welcome back mga ka-MBH. Now, we will discuss the VAT on sale of goods or properties. The term goods or properties shall mean all tangible and intangible objects which are capable of pecuniary estimation and shall include number 1 real properties held primarily for sale to customers or held for lease in the ordinary course or of trade or business so kailangan natin tandaan na dapat yung ibinebenta nating real property ay in the ordinary course of business para masabi natin na siya ay subject to bat so ano nga ba yung mga industry na to ito yung mga real estate companies kasi normal sa kanila sa operation nila or ginagawa nila ang magbenta ng property on a normal basis so bakit natin kailangan yung tandaan dahil kung hindi ito in the ordinary course of business magiging subject siya sa capital gains tax at hindi sa bat number 2 the right of the privilege to use patent copyright design model plan secret formula or pro or process goodwill trademark trade brand and other like property or right so, so tulad nga ng sinabi natin kanina kasama rin dito yung mga intangible assets tulad ng patent and copyright halimbawa ay yung mga franchise fees ng mga stores sa, sa mall subject yun sa 12% bat Number three, the right or privilege to use in the Philippines of any industrial, commercial, or scientific equipment. So, i-highlight naman natin dito yung phrase na in the Philippines. Kasi, hindi na sakop ng territory natin or ng tax system, tax system natin yung, il, yung ibang bansa. And alin, alinsunod na rin ito sa cross-border doctrine ng taxation. Number four, the right or privilege to use motion pictures films, tapes, and and this. So, ito naman yung mga royalties. So, bale, subject din sila sa 12% pa. Number 5 is the radio, television, satellite transmission, and cable television time. So, ito naman yung mga services na in, ino-offer ng mga industries sa entertainment. So, yung formula natin sa pagkuha ng bat payable or yung amount our tax liability na babayaran natin sa BIR is output tax less input tax. We all know na yung VAT ay 12%. So yung formula nito is yung output tax na manggagaling sa sales. Ma-minus natin dito yung input tax na manggagaling naman sa purchases. Next is determining the tax base. For sales of goods in the group is the gross selling price which is the total amount of money or its equivalents which which the our purchaser space is obligated to pay the seller in consideration of the sale the excise tax if any of, of such goods or property shall form part of the gross selling price in short the gross selling price is the invoice price less any allowable deductions excluding the VAT so, ibig sabihin, hindi kasama ang BAT sa selling price. So, bago mo kunin yung BAT na 12%, kailangan mo munang siguraduhin na yun ay exclusive of BAT. Halimbawa, sa mga fast food chain, may selling price na 56 pesos. So, kasama na sa babayaran mo doon yung BAT. Ibig sabihin, imumultiply mo ba siya agad sa 12%? Hindi. Kasi, invoice price yun. At ibig sabihin kapag invoice price, ito ay inclusive of VAT. Ibig sabihin, kasama yung VAT do sa presyo. So, ang gagawin natin, kailangan muna nating kuning yung gross selling price sa pamamagitan ng pagdidivide nito sa 112% and from that, makukuha natin yung 100%. Ngayon, kapag nakuha na natin yung 100% nung invoice price, makukuha na natin yung gross selling price. Ang gagawin natin is itatimes natin siya ngayon sa 12% para makuha na natin yung VAT which is sa, sa ating computation is 6 pesos. So dapat nating tandaan na kapag silent yung problem like sa mga quizzes and exams, 
that is exclusive of bat. So, wala tayong ibang gagawin kundi i-multiply sa 12%. Again, kapag silent yung problem, it is considered exclusive of bat. So, yung ex excise tax naman, ito ay kasama sa goods, sa cost ng goods, kaya kasama siya sa tax base. In case of barter, sale, or exchange of real property subject to VAT, gross selling price shall mean the consideration, consideration is stated in the sales document or per market value whichever is higher. The, tem, the term per market value shall mean whichever higher up, the per market value as determined the commissioner or the zonal value, and the per market value as shown in the schedule of value of provincial or C city assessors. Sa sale ng real property naman, ang tax base na gagamitin natin is kung alin yung mas mataas sa gross selling price at sa fair market value. Next is the allowable deductions from gross selling price. So una is the sales returns and allowances. Kasi ito yung mga goods na iba na, diba? ito yung mga goods na ibinabalik ng customers. So hindi siya kasama sa sale na naganap. Therefore, walang output ba, output bat na maaakro sa portion na to, sa portion ng mga goods na ibinalik sa atin ng customers. Pangalawa, sales discounts provided, the sales discounts granted is indicated in the invoice at the time of the sale. Number two, the grant of which does not depend upon the happening of the future event. Ano ba pag sinabi nating it does not depend upon the happening of the future event. So halimbawa, kapag sinabi sa problem or sa transaction na magkakaroon tayo ng discount kung mababayaran mo yung utang mo, utang mo na goods sa loob ng 10 days. So ibig sabihin nakadepende sa future event yung discount at maaari may chance ito na hindi mangyari. Kaya naman, hindi ito allowable deductions. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo pwede itong i-deduct sa gross selling price. Pangatlo is when the discount is expressly indicated in the invoice. So, ibig sabihin, allowed lang na allowed lang na magkaroon ng deductions sa gross selling price kapag ito ay naka-indicate sa invoice or sa official receipt. Accordingly, cash discount which is based on the prompt payment of the buyer is not allowable as deduction. Whereas, trade discounts which are granted at the time of the sale and are based usually on the on the bulk of orders is allowable since it is not dependent on a future event. So, ibig sabihin, kapag ito ay dependent sa future event, hindi siya allowable. Kapag naman ito ay not dependent sa future event, ito ay allowable. So, gawin natin mas simple. Hindi allowable ang trade discounts kasi wala ito or hindi ito indicated sa invoice or sa resibo. So, kap so halimbawa, kapag tumawad ka sa isang tindahan, bawas na kaagad yung discount na nakuha mo, kaya hindi mo na siya dapat pang bawasin sa gross selling price. Kasi, yung itinawad, itinawad mo dun or ibin yung ibinigay sa'yo na discount is hindi kasama sa resibo na ibibigay sa'yo. Next, but a cruise on the consumption of sale. In the contract of sale, the contract is perfected upon the meeting of the minds. However, ownership is transferred until delivery is made, which is the consumption of the contract. Kasi di ba? Kung babalikan natin sa law, is makakompleto perfected na yung contract kapag meron ng meeting of the minds. However, yung ownership is matatransfer pa lang upon delivery or kapag na consumption kapag na consumption mo na yung uh, yung goods so ibig sabihin kapag nalipat mo na yung ownership or na deliver mo na yung goods doon pa lang magkakaroon ng sale so iko-consider natin siya na sale bayad man or hindi kapag nagkaroon na ng consumption so illustration Anna sold goods to Berto on March 28, 2021 when it was delivered as well. Berto paid Anna on April 2, 2021. Since the transaction is a sale of goods, the, pat, the VAT shall be considered in March when the sale was consummated, regardless of whether the payment was made on the subsequent month which is April. So, ibig sabihin, tulad ng sinabi natin kanina, 
mag acro ang bat the moment na na-deliver na yung goods dun sa buyer. Kahit hindi pa nila nababayaran yung inutang nila. Kahit hindi pa nababayaran yung goods or services na ibinigay sa kanila. So dito sa illustration na to, kahit na binayaran niya yung goods na i-deliver sa kanya sa month ng April, mag a or i-record natin yung bat sa March kasi March siya i-deliver. Or March nagkaroon ng consumption of the sale. Next is the sale of real property. The sale of real property on, on installment means sale of real property by a real estate dealer. The initial payments which in the year of sale do not exceed 25% of the gross selling price or contract price. Sale on deferred payment basis if the initial payments exceed 20, 25% of the gross selling price or contract price the transaction shall be considered as sale on a deferred payment basis and will be treated as a cash sales which make the entire selling price taxable in the month quarter of sale. So, isimplify natin. So, sinasabi dito na kapag ang initial payment ay hindi lumampas ng 25% ng total amount ng real property, installment ang pag-record recognize natin sa bat. Meaning, kung magkano lang yung binayaran sa month na yun, yun lang ang imumultiply natin sa 12. Kung magkano lang yung initial payment or initial down payment, yun lang ang amount na i-recognize natin as VAT. So kapag naman lumampas sa 25% yung, yung initial payment or yung down payment, imumultiply na natin agad sa 12% yung total amount or yung contact contract price yung kabuuan ng amount ng presyo ng real property kahit hindi pa bayad lahat. So, ibig sabihin kahit installment yung bayad mo pero yung initial payment mo ilampas na ng 25% ere-recognize na natin ang kabuuan kabuuan ng amount ng real property yung VAT at hindi installment. So, ano nga ba yung initial payments? So, initial payment shall mean the sum of one, the down payment Number two, all installment payments made or is expected to receive during the year. And three, when the amount of mortgage is more than the cost of the seller, the excess form part of the initial payments. So, pag, sa pag-determine natin whether uh, lumampas ba siya or hindi sa so 25%, ito yung mga pagbabasihan natin yung down payment, yung installment, and then yung mortgage. So, para mas maintindihan natin, meron tayo ditong illustration. So, a land was sold for 3 million exclusive of VAT, payable in 20 monthly installments of 150,000 each. So, number one, if the lot was sold on March 1, the total monthly installment payments of the initial payments would be 1.5 million. Since the, since the initial payment is 50% of the selling price, this would be considered as a sale on deferred payment basis and accordingly the whole 360 360,000 but on the sale of lot would be due in month or quarter of the sale so dito sa illustration natin sa letter A mapapansin natin na 50% yung initial payment ng selling price so ibig sabihin lumampas siya or nag-exceed sa 25% and tulad ng sabi natin kanina kapag lumampas sa 25% yung initial payments is i-recognize -re natin ng buo yung total na amount ng real property kahit hindi pa siya fully paid. So, ang nangyari dito is 3 million the total price times 12% equals 360,000. So, i-recognize na natin ng kabuuan yung VAT. Letter B, if the lot was sold in November 1, the total monthly installment payments for 2017 would be 300,000 pesos only, equivalent to 2 months, which is 10% of the selling price and thus would classify as installment sale. So dito naman sa letter B is 10% lang ng, ng selling price yung initial payment. And then kung babalikan natin yung kanina, 
is hindi siya nag-exceed sa 25%. So, ang gagawin natin kapag hindi nag-exceed sa 25%, kasi nga ito ay 10% lamang, is ang i-recognize lang natin is yung portion lang ng initial payments. And then, yung initial payments lang dito ay yung 300,000. Ibig sabihin, ay yung 300,000 lang ang i-divide natin sa 12% para makuha natin yung yung bat na 36,000. So letter B, if in the case above but the in the case of B, but the fair value of the land is 2 million, the computation would be the same since the selling price is higher than the market value. So dito naman sa letter C is kaparehas lang ng computation ng letter B. Bakit? Kasi ang binigay ng market value is 2 million. 2 million is lower than the than the selling price which is, which is 3 million. So ibig sabihin, sinabi natin sa concept natin kanina na ang gagamitin natin is yung higher than selling price and market value. So ibig sabihin, since mas mababa yung market value ng land is i-disregard na lang natin siya kasi ang gagamitin natin is yung selling price na mas mataas which is the 3 million. Letter D, if in B above, the market value of the land is 4 million, then the amount will be the basis of the VAT computation. So, dito naman, kaibahan naman is yung binigay ng market value is 4 million. So, ibig sabihin yung 4 million ang mas mataas kesa sa selling price which is 3 million. So, ang, gagamit, ang gagamitin natin is yung higher. Yung higher is the fair market value which is the 4 million. So, para sa computation, sa, para sa illustration letter D, it is installment times fair market value over, cost, over contract price equals the VAT base. So, ganito yung magiging explanation. Since mas mataas yung fair market value at yun yung gagamitin natin, which is the 4 million, kailangan nating alamin yung portion ng initial payments sa amount na yun. So, parang ganito. Ilang percent ba ng total price yung initial payment? So, sa case na to, since yung initial payment natin is 150,000, is i-divide natin siya sa 3 million para makuha natin yung portion portion ng initial payment sa total amount. So, ang makukuha natin is 150,000 divided by 3 million equals 5%. Ibig sabihin, doon sa 3 million na selling price is 5% yung initial payment. So ngayon, niya apply naman natin yung 5% dun sa napili nating amount na higher, which is the fair market value, which is the 4 million. So 4 million, i-divide, ita times natin siya sa 5% and then magka-come up tayo sa 200,000 na siyang gagamitin natin na tax base. So yung 200,000, since nakuha na natin yung tax base, ita times naman natin siya ngayon sa 12%, para makuha na natin yung value added tax. Next is the transaction deem sale. As the term implies, entails to no actual sale but their nature are considered as sales subject to VAT. So ibig sabihin sa transaction deem sales, hindi ka talaga nag hindi ka talaga nagbenta. Ibig sabihin walang actual sale. So walang sale na, na naganap pero i-consider natin siya na sale kasi na consume na kasi na consume na yung goods sa ibang paraan although hindi siya sale. So ano nga ba yung rationale nito? Yung rationale nito is halimbawa bumili ka ng materials. Bumili ka ng materials or supplies and then yung materials na yon gagamitin mo para makabuo ka ng product. So from that, magkakaroon ka ng input bat which is alam naman natin na deductible siya sa bat payable natin. So yung in, mag, sa pagbili mo ng materials, nagkaroon ka ng input bat na ibabawas mo sa tax liability mo or dun sa bat payable. So ibig sabihin yung rationale dito is unfair naman kung na, kung na-consume mo naman yung goods tapos hindi ka magkakaroon ng output bat mula sa goods na pinagamitan mo nung materials which is subject to input bat. So unfair na nakinabang ka sa input bat pero wala kang output bat na babayaran. So therefore, kailangan nating i-apply yung bat kahit hindi ito actual sale. 
So for the tax base, the Commissioner of the Internal Revenue shall, shall determine the appropriate tax base in cases where transaction is deemed sale, barter, or, or exchange of goods or properties where the gross selling price is unreasonably lower than the actual market value. Ngayon, paano natin malalaman kung yung sinasabi dito na unreasonable? Unreasonable? Paano natin malalaman kung unreasonable na yung market value na ginagamit ng business? Malalaman natin ito kapag mas mababa na ng 30% sa presyo ng actual market. In that case, yung Commissioner of Internal Revenue ang magdi-decide kung ano ang tax base na gagamitin natin para sa value-added tax. Ngayon, I-discuss naman natin yung mga example ng transactions dim sale. Una, transfer, use, or consumption not in the ordinary course of business or goods or properties originally intended for sale or for use in the course of business. ba diba? Yung general, general rule natin para maging subject siya sa BAT, dapat it is in the ordinary course of business. Pero dito, sinasabi dito na transfer use or consumption not in the ordinary course of goods of not or not in the ordinary course of business of goods or properties pero i-consider natin siya na deemed sale so para mas maintindihan natin magbigay tayo ng example so halimbawa si Goldilocks di ba nagtitinda nagbebenta siya ng ng mga cakes and then ng mga pastries so for example nagkaroon sila ng Christmas party yan tapos So, ginamit nila yung mga products nila like mga cakes and mga tinapay para ihanda dun sa Christmas party nila or ipamigay, ipapremyo dun sa mga attendees nila or dun sa mga empleyado. So, dito, may consider natin na transaction dim sale siya kasi originally is intended naman yun for sale. And then, na-consume, na-consume lang nila sa ibang paraan which is yung pamimigay bilang premyo or bilang incentives. So, number two, distribution or transfer to, letter A, shareholders or investor as share in the profits of bad registered persons. Letter B, creditors in payment of debt. So, ibig sabihin kung yung mga goods mo is ibinigay mo sa uh, mga shareholders or, or investor para uh, katumbas ng mga profit nila or halimbawa naman meron kang pinagkakautangan tapos imbis na cash yung ibinayad mo is yung uh, is yung mga goods na na meron ka, yung mga products na meron ka, yung ibinayad mo imbis na, imbis na cash, is i-consider din natin siya na transaction dim sale and therefore subject to VAT. Next naman is the consignment of goods if actual sale is not made within 60 days following the date of such goods. So, sinasabi dito na kapag cons- nag-consign ka ng goods sa, a- sa agent mo, ibig sabihin is uh, yung goods mo is ibinigay mo sa agent para ibenta niya, pero yung ownership is sa'yo pa rin, tapos hindi niya ibinabalik sa'yo within 60 days, it is presumed na nabenta na yon or sold na. So, ibig sabihin, kahit hindi pa, hindi pa talaga siya nabebenta, pero lumampas na yung 60 days, ire-record na natin siya as sales and therefore, subject na sa VAT. And lastly, retirement pro- from or cessation of business with respect to the inventories of taxable goods existing as such retirement or cessation. The VAT shall also apply to goods disposed of or existing as of certain date if under circumstances the prescribed in rules and regulations to be promulgated by the Secretary of Finance upon the recommendation of the Commissioner the status of a person as bad registered person changes or is terminated. So, sinasabi dito na kapag yung business mo is magliquidate na so or magsasara na, di ba? O ginagawa natin sa accounting is kapag magsasara na yung business or magliquidate na, ibinibenta na natin yung mga asset niya, yung mga inventories, yung mga PPE, yung mga land, building. So, dahil tayo ay magsasara doon na or magliquidate na, ibibenta na natin yung mga assets natin. So, yung mga inventories na ibibenta natin or yung iba pang mga assets dahil yun ay considered din na sale or or transaction deem sale is magiging subject din siya sa VAT. And 
that's all for today. See you on our next video.